Well, Cass, I'm going to pick up with part two of our video, kind of leaving off where we were. Um, we had already plotted our vertices and our co-vertices. Um, I was about to name our co-vertices uh, at 0, 2, and 0, negative 2. And then finally, we want to be able to plot those focal points, which were, again, going to be on the major axis, which in this case was the horizontal axis. So when I plot my uh, focal points, remember I'm going to go a distance of 2.2 units, but I'm going to be going, let's change colors here, I'm going to be going uh, right and left about 2.2 units. So it's going to be just inside the vertices there. Uh, when we identify those, use the exact value of C, so we'll say square root 5, 0 and negative root 5, 0. And finally, we can graph our ellipse by connecting our vertices and covertices. Okay. Our last couple of examples are key, important examples, because in these cases, I'm not giving you the equation. You're going to have to write the equation yourself with the information you're given, and then, of course, we're going to have to graph the equation. And honestly, we're going to be graphing the equation along the process. That's going to help us to be able to actually write the equation. So let's start with what we know. The center of this ellipse is at the origin, so we'll plot that center right away. Um, and I know that I have one focus at 0, negative 3. So if I plot that point, 0, negative 3, at my focus point, remember that there will be a second focus point right on the other side at 0, positive 3. Now, because of these focus points, remember that the uh, distance from the center to the foci, that's your C value. So now I know that my C value in this equation is actually 3. Okay, the next thing that they give us is the covertex. They tell us one covertex is at 5, 0. Um, oh, I just realized I plotted those, uh, those points wrong. Sorry. Our, uh, co our, our focal points were at 0, negative 3. That's down on the y-axis. And then 0, positive 3. Um, it's not going to change our c value. Our distance is still 3. When we plot our co-vertices, our first co-vertex is at 5, 0. That's on my x-axis. And that means there's going to be a second vertex at negative 5, 0. Now remember, the distance from the center to the co-vertex, that's my b value, which means that I now know my b value is 5. Now, we're only given these pieces of information, but with these two, we can actually go about finding the remaining a value by using our equation, a squared minus b squared equals c squared. So I don't know my a squared. I know my b squared will be 25. My c squared will be 9. And when I add 25 and 9, I'm going to get 34. So my a squared is 34, which means my a value is square root 34. And remember, for graphing purposes, that square root of 34 is approximately 5.8. Okay, now the vertex point is, um, so this A value is going to center us from the center to the vert vertex points. And that means, and remember that the vertex points are going to be the ends of the major axis. So just like the focal points are going up and down, my vertex points are going up and down. So I'm going to go up 5.8, down 5.8, and those are my vertices. And I now have enough information to actually draw the ellipse, connecting my vertices and, and co-vertices together. The last thing I need to do is actually write the equation of the ellipse. We know that the equations are going to be in the form of x squared plus y squared. We're going to have fractions equals 1. Um, we know that our a squared value is 34. We had that right up here. And we know that our b squared value is 25. That came from right over here. But where are we placing these? Remember that the larger number, that uh, a squared value, that larger number, really look at what direction the ellipse is opening. Since we had to go up and down 5.8, uh, 5 since the, the major axis is vertical here, 
That tells us that my a squared value has to be under my y's to send me up and down that unit. And that means that my 25 is going to be under my x's because I went left and right to five units. So there's my equation. Okay. And I just wanted to look at two more quick examples so that we could really think about what kind of information we're given. I don't want you to jump to conclusions and use the information in the wrong way. This one, it tells us uh, that the ellipse has one focus at zero, two. So if we plot that point carefully, that's right here. Now, we know that there's a second focus, but it has not told us at this point where the center is. So without knowing where the center is, I can't plot the second focus quite yet. If we go on to the next piece of information, we do know that the vertices are at zero, negative five, so that's down here, and zero, positive five, right up here. Okay, now, if you find what's right exactly in between the vertices, that does prove to us now that the center is at zero, zero. Just please note, class, that you don't, if you don't know where the center is until you've proven it, you're not going to be able to plot the rest of the points. Once we know the center is at zero, zero, I can actually go back to that focus point and I can plot a second focus point right down here at zero, negative two. Okay, last thing I need now is my covertices. So let's think about the values that we have at this point. The distance from the center to the foci is two and that is going to be our c value. The distance from the center to the vertices is 5, and that is going to be our a value. So the only thing that we're missing now is our b value. If we do a squared minus b squared equals c squared, 25 minus b squared equals 4. When we subtract 25, and divide by negative 1, we get b squared to be 21, which means b is square root of 21. Um, square root of 21 is approximately 4.6 for when I'm plotting that. So my covertices, I'm going to go out about 4.6, uh, left and right. And now I can actually draw my ellipse. Okay, last step, we still need to write the equation. We know the format, x squared over something plus y squared over something equals one. We know that our a squared is 25, that's from right up there. We know that our b squared is 21, that's from right there. Uh, and if you notice the directions that we went, we went up and down five units. So that means that the 25 must be falling underneath uh, the y value. And then we went left and right um, square root 21 units. So that must have fallen under the x value. And here is our second equation. Okay, one more quick example. Find the equation of the ellipse centered at zero, zero, so we do know the center. The foci are at positive and negative three comma zero. So I have one foci here, and I have one foci, whoops, and I have one foci right over here. And that means that my C value must be three, the distance from my center to my focal points. The other thing it tells us is that the y-intercepts are positive and negative two. Okay, and that's great. There's my y-intercepts, but I don't know what those are actually representing. So think about what we do know. If the foci, let's go back to those foci again. So if the foci are running horizontally, then that means that the major axis must also be horizontal. And if the major axis is horizontal, that means that the vertices must also be going left and right. Now, if the vertices are going left and right, then that means that the covertices must be going up and down. So that tells us that those y-intercepts are technically my covertices. And because they're my covertices, I now know that the distance from the center to the covertices is my b-value. And with those two values, I can go back and find my a value. So a squared minus b squared equals c squared. a squared minus 4 equals 9. 
a squared is 13, a is square root of 13. And square root of 13 is approximately 3.6 when I'm plotting this. Um, I'm going to be going left and right, 3.6. So that's going to be just past the focal points, very, very close to them. And now I can draw my ellipse. Oops, through there. Okay, last step, my equation. x squared over something plus y squared over something equals 1. Your a squared value is, let's see, a squared value is 13. Remember, we have that right over here. Your b squared value is 4. That came from our b value of 2. And if you look at your graph, you're going to notice that we actually went up and down two places. So the 4 must be under the y. And then we went left and right, 3.6. So that means that the 13 must be under the x. What I wanted to leave you with then um, are just some real life examples of ellipses and we're, we're going to come back uh, in another week or two and actually do several real life examples, but I wanted to kind of point out just where you're going to start seeing some of these ellipses since they are really the most commonly seen comic con exception, section, excuse me. Sometimes you see these ellipses even on the sides of buildings. Uh, you see ellipses daily whenever you tilt your glass or anything like that. Um, hopefully we know that the planets orbit the sun in an elliptical fashion, meaning that at some point in time your planet is furthest away from the sun and at another point in time your planet is actually closer to the sun. And one of the things that I think is the coolest about ellipses is how sound and light waves work. Um, and this is, we're going to see a really cool example with this. A lot of uh, Capitol buildings, uh, U.S. Capitol buildings, state Capitol buildings are actually in the shape of an ellipse. So for example, the structure of the building itself is kind of half of an elliptical shape. And because of that, there's some really interesting things that happen with the focal points that occur inside that ellipse and what happens when light and sound bounce off of those focal points. So we're going to see some really cool examples. Uh, hopefully you'll find them cool a bit later. Good luck as you are working on some of your 